I'm Trent Palmer. I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. What's up guys? So I just got loaded up. Quinn and I are heading to Idaho for the AOPA's Backcountry Aviation Safety Summit. But uh, sounds like Quinn's looking at a steerman up there. So he's gonna jump in the Freedom Fox with me and hopefully fly a new to him steerman home. So oh, should be fun. We are on a big mission. Could be really, really cool. I have no idea what we're getting ourselves into, but it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That's kind of cool, but want to see something really cool? Look at that thing. That is awesome. John, have you ever been interviewed about this guy right here? What do you think uh, about him? Oh, just God. an awesome guy. I was like, choose wisely, I edit these. That's, <laughs> actually, that's the truth. It's a pleasure to work with some of the younger generation that doesn't have the same mentality of the entitlement that a lot of them have. They're not caught up in the millennial. His parents raised him right, I guess, for lack of better ways to put it. You are a millennial. I feel like I'm the epitome of a millennial. Yeah. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> That's like worse. <laughs> All right. Now, after Homedale, we made the exhausting, I don't know, seven minute flight over to Caldwell, Idaho. Met up with the Dorries and a few other friends. Now, Ty is supposed to be working his way back here. He's actually based here. I don't know if he's going to make it before we leave. All we got to do, though, is before sunset, make it over the Frank Church Wilderness into uh, Smiley Creek. It smells like turbine. What's up, dude? Where'd you come in from? Uh, where'd I come from? Jerome. Uh, and Iowa yesterday morning. Yesterday morning. So this morning was Nebraska. This morning was Nebraska. <laughs> I've made eight landings since uh, this morning. <laughs> nice. Hi, what the hell is that dent from? I hit a tree. A tree? <laughs> yeah, a tree. Back in like May. <laughs> Here we go, big day. Smiley Creek or bus. This is that 10 miles of no man's land that we are just keep purring. All right, just made it to Smiley Creek. That was fun. It was a beautiful flight. We had a nice tailwind, but there is a good like 15 minutes of that flight that is like no man's land. We were going kind of following the rivers and where there were dirt strips, but then there's a section in there that you're just like, we lose engine and things are getting real. But anyway, super beautiful spot up here, 7,200 feet in this valley that's kind of in the shadow of the sawtooth. Really rad. All right, just finished an awesome little breakfast over at Smiley Creek Lodge. I've been here before, like I said, and that breakfast is one of the better ones. I mean, I don't know, flying to breakfast is just the best thing ever, but I think we're gonna go sit down with the group of guys here, do this little AOPA Air Safety Institute Backcountry Aviation Safety Summit. Man, that is a mouthful. Anyway, sounds like we're being summoned over there now. Have a great time, Matt. You used to people putting cameras in your face? Somewhat. I'm more used to being behind the camera, but that's no problem. All right, we're taking a little break from our, our little talk. Man, it is so beautiful out here, I love it. While we're on the topic of safety and things that are not fun to talk about, I should mention one other thing, that uh, if you're a an, an adult with a family, you should be protected at least from the front, that if worst case scenario, we were flying over some stuff that's really nasty and stuff happens, 
and having life insurance is something that is a responsibility that we all should be taking on. Unfortunately, shopping for life insurance is never fun. It's very confusing. It can be overwhelming, but luckily it doesn't have to be that way thanks to the sponsor of this video, Policy Genius. Policy Genius compares the top life insurance companies to find you the right coverage at the best possible price. With Policy Genius, you can save up to 40% just by comparing quotes. And because Policy Genius is an independent broker, they fight for the customer, not the insurance company. Because choosing the wrong life insurance company could cost you over $47,000 over the course of a 30 year policy. Now, I found the process of shopping for life insurance through Policy Genius extremely straightforward. You just go through, fill out the questionnaire, choose your coverage, and you'll basically get instant quotes from a ton of different providers. Policy Genius never sells your information to other companies and doesn't add on extra fees. And Policy Genius isn't just for life insurance, they offer home and auto as well. Policy Genius has saved their home and auto insurance customers an average of $1,127 a year. And when it's time to renew, Policy Genius will reshop on your behalf to ensure that you're paying the best possible price. So visit policygenius.com slash Trent Palmer to shop the market and start saving today. Thanks again, Policy Genius, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. That went on a lot longer than I expected, but I think it was good. It was a it was a good group of people and it, it brought up some good points. But now since we started the meeting, we've noticed that the wind picked up pretty heavily and over the sawtooth, there's been clouds coming and tumbling over, basically doing like a Helmholtz cloud. I don't know if you know what a Helmholtz cloud is. I'll show an image of one now. But basically it's those clouds you see that look like a perfect like drawing of a wave on the ocean. And that's normally a pretty good indication of very unstable air that's up there swirling. So it's not something I'm super excited about jumping in the plane and flying through. And especially after coming off of a safety talk like that, it seems uh, poor taste to go fly on a hot day at high altitude over a very desolate mountain range in heavy winds. So I think I'm gonna have to go have a talk with Quinn, see what a, we want to do. Maybe we just sit down, have lunch, relax for a while, hope it cools down. Maybe we say we have to stay here tonight. Who knows? have now been hanging out for a couple hours. A couple of the guys did leave in their heavier planes. And they look like they got rocked a bit, but we're just trying to find signals so that we can check the weather and get some good interpolation on weather. But yeah, it's kind of funny. We're here at a safety seminar. We're practicing what we preach, you know, and the big thing you got to be prepared. So we're trying to prepare ourselves so that we can make a good decision because it's all about the experience, right? And if you're not prepared, you have a bad experience, bad things happen. But if you prepare yourself for that kind of good stuff, you have a good experience. <laughs> this, is, this is great because the critical decisions are always made in the gray area, right? And here we are in the gray area. It's, it's not that bad, but it's kind of bad. And so what is it really? What's a real situation? Yeah. That's what's hard about this kind of decision-making in aeronautics, right? If it were right or wrong, it'd be, it'd be really easy. Yeah. But it's not, it's always in the gray area where the critical decisions are made. It really is. We've got a lot of experience between us and we've had pilots leave and take off. And then that builds another whole set of circumstances where you start wondering like, well, God, I could do that too, you know? And you gotta realize they're in a heavy aircraft, we're in an 800 pound aircraft. And it's completely different. That, that's an important factor because yeah. what's, What's right for one pilot is not necessarily right for another one, yeah. right? So you got to make sure that just because somebody else did it doesn't mean you can. And just because they didn't do it doesn't mean it's wrong that you decide to do it. You got to know your your conditions, right? And your skill set. And comfort level. Yeah, that's that's the critical piece of it. Not what somebody else is doing. What do you, what, do you, what can you do? And that's really true. Gets, that's what gets people in trouble. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. All right, so the wind has still not fully died, but we've been going through a lot of lulls. Right now we're kind of in a, a bit of a gust, but overall we're not looking at the gnarly, you know, twisting clouds, that big cold front, the dry cold front already passed through. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in the air, work our way up, kind of try to meander our way through the Frank Church wilderness to get us up towards Lewiston. Um, I think we're gonna go like Salmon River and then over to Cascade and work our way kind of northwest bound and play it by ear. Plenty of places to land between here and there, so if it gets uh, nasty, we will land. Wait for that windsock to, to 
should be limp for a half second. And then just pin it. Pin it. Right. You ready? Uh-huh. Get there eventually. Sea level is a trip. <laughs> Feels like we're just stopped right now. Uh, we're hovering. <laughs> I got a great shadow over here. Oh man! You're gonna put the shadow on the line. Scoot left. Keep the shadow on the center line. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have to scoot right, right at the end. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, hey, we just hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, we just made it to Lewiston. I had no idea it was this far north. We were like literally looking at Washington right there. We went up past the north end of Oregon, followed the Snake River. It was so beautiful. I left the camera in the back, so excuse the iPhone video, but check this out. Quinn, what have you gotten yourself into? Dang. Let's eat real quick, then yeah. we'll go fly. Holy, look at that thing. Holy cow, Trent. Dude, what are you getting into? I no idea. I just got sweaty minutes. balls. <laughs> you want to get belted in, and I'll kind of show you about the... Holy <laughs> dude. I feel like it's my first time going flying. <laughs> Be like your 180 here in about 10 minutes. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm terrified. Clear prop. Now I'm going to push the starter. It goes around, what, three or four times, yep. and then bring the mags in? Yep, and you bring the mags in one at a time. Poor guy, we rushed him. <laughs> it was awesome, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm like, where's my airspeed? My RPM? What? I get one flight and see, dream about it all night. <laughs> Still trying to figure out how to get out. Excited or nervous? I'm nervous. I really, I didn't know what I was looking at. I got in there and I'm between the seatbelt to the master, and you're like, this is the radio, this is how you turn the radio on, bring it forward, and I'm like, see ya! Woo! <laughs> Good luck! Nah. All right, welcome to the next day. It is Quinn's training day. Training day, I'm sorry, honey. I'm in so much trouble with my wife. <laughs> Tell me where this all came from, because I mean, big tires is what we this do. Is, this is aviation, and I've been passionate about aviation my whole life. I had one of these, literally my grandfather made a, uh, a model biplane that hang, hung in my bedroom since I was a little guy. I had a poster of a steerman on the wall. This is aviation at its finest, open cockpit flying, biplane flying. These trained thousands of our young kids to go to war and, and fly these Mustangs and these P-40s. And it's just, it's something completely different. It's, I'm new to this side of aviation and I'm so inspired by it. It's just, it's, for lack of an adjective, it's invigorating my entire uh, aviation life. It's not like that cute little Cessna primer. <laughs> this is a man's primer. Okay, so another thing. It felt really good, it's getting better. You ready for solo? I'm getting close, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting close. I guess it's my turn. Go for a little ride in this thing. Never been in anything like this, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Jared, 
<laughs> it's so funny, as soon as I get in a plane that I'm not like comfortable and used to, I get in there, I'm just like, I know nothing. <laughs> and we did, like the like lazy turns, fine, your little crop duster turns, I'm like, I'm cool. And then we did the roll, I'm like instantly like, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> and then the barrel roll and hammerhead had me sweat. You need to, I guess, step out there and get a little scared every once in a while, right? Yeah. Dude, you guys have, this is Hangar 180. Yep. Hangar you guys need to check them out, too, yeah. because. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, they're doing some cool stuff with some cool airplanes. Yep, hopefully keeping history alive. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and scaring Trent. Yeah. So Quinn has been flying this most of the day with Jared in there with him. But it's go time, dude. It is go time. Pulled the prop through a few times. We just flew it a half an hour ago. I was fired up and now I'm shaking again. <laughs> I was gonna say, big boy <laughs> pants going on right now. Big boy pants, hang on, I gotta tighten my belt a little bit. <laughs> Heard him go, woohoo! <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah, we're on a mission. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, I won't lie, but we're gonna crush this beautiful morning. Getting real now. These guys have been so awesome to us. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah. This guy is a wealth of knowledge. Oh, Gary Peters, insane. Hangar 180. Yeah. Come check him out. Yeah. yeah thank you. I can't thank you enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, I'll Lord. make you proud with this thing. I'm flying like an eagle. I'm circling the sun. I want to do so many things, things I have never done. Just show me where the path gives out, and that's where I'll run. A passenger of what someone else desires I'm wild as the lavender But hungry like a fire If you ask me where I keep my roots I'll put up to the sky Stop one down, huh? Ooh, stop one! <laughs> no lie, I was like, oh god, now we gotta go land <laughs> <laughs> This is a sketch part Like, I can see how an old guy would be like Yeah, I'm all good Big airplanes are sketch. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden you're nine feet off the ground. <laughs> it's gnarly. So we are in Hermiston, Washington. And then we'll kind of work our way south and head back homeward. I can relate, I'm thinking like, I'm up Yeah, here. you don't want to fall from up there. Welcome to beautiful Prime View, Oregon. Fuel stop two, both already fueled up. Quinn's using the restroom really quick and then we are onward and upward Lake County. Just landed in uh, Lakeview, Oregon, Lake County Airport. Ran into a couple other big tire guys coming back from Idaho. Sounded like they had a good time, but fuel pump was broken. Sounds like they got that fixed. This is the last fuel stop and then we are heading home. There was a guy, an elderly fellow, that was gonna buy it. He backed away when he realized what it took to film it or to uh, fill it, fuel it. it. Yeah, we're doing it, dude. Oh, buddy, we're making we're almost it. Almost home. She's <laughs> running good. We got a beautiful day. We left early, what 5:30, and we have been kind of following roads just with the radial. You know, it's not a bush plane, so and keeping it a little safer. It, you yeah. know, learning about the airplane. So we could have gone across the mountains in our bush planes. We would have. Yeah. This is a new aircraft and. Baby steps, fuel stop the fuel stop, trying to figure out how much fuel it's really burning. You know, somebody can tell you one thing, but the reality is, is you gotta do it yourself and figure it out. So now we're on this big leg. This is our big leg, about probably just two hours, I figure, hour yeah. and 45. This will be the most fuel burn, but we got 44 gallons. When I get there, I should be burning about 30 gallons. I should have 15 to spare. Yep. I think we're looking good. That's perfect. All right, dude, this is where we uh, part ways. Holy cow, buddy. I got one more landing, the one that counts. What a trip. 
Hell yeah, you got it, dude. I think uh, that was a fun trip. Glad we did it. Glad you got that thing home safe. Text me when you're on the ground. I will for sure, man. I can do the flight plan because I can't thank you enough, Trenner. Like, you've been a big part of this, and I can't thank, thank you enough for being, uh, being there and doing it, man. Yeah, no, no problem. I was happy to be there. Later, dude. Buddy, excuse me. Oh, that was a good 5.7 hours of flying today. Overall, I think we must have done, what, probably 15, which isn't bad. Fun little four-day trip. Glad to be home. Glad Quinn finally got his childhood dream of an airplane. So anyway, guys, I'm exhausted. I'm going to wrap this one up here. You guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one. Peace.